What type of a bankroll do you need to start playing poker? I can't stand this question and discussion actually. Uh, when I first started playing, I guess what I would call full time, like I didn't have any other source of income. I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, forget like debts or money I expected in the future, just like cash on hand. I had about $17,000 in March 2015 when I moved to Vegas. I knew my rent. I paid six fifty dollars a month for a room in a house, uh, no utilities, and I knew what my you know car cost, um, the ongoing things. It was paid off kind of as the tram passes by me in the background. I had about $17,000. My goal was not to go broke in a year. I thought my expenses for the year would be about $17,000 and I had never played every day. I was hoping I could play and make at least $17,000 and when year two began, just be in the exact same scenario. Like still be afloat and still be playing and just basically don't go broke. That was my goal. So that's what I had. It wasn't just poker though. I hate the idea of separating um, like your money into poker and not poker. I could see some, uh, some scenario of life you can be in where you would do that. Um, I mean, if you're gonna be winning, I don't quite understand it. I keep track of all the incomes I have. It's mostly poker right now, but everything that comes in and all my bills, everything that goes out. So I think that's better than just having your money in two different places. Like this is the money I'm gonna live on and this is the money that I'm gonna use for poker. Um, I just know everything that comes in and I know everything that goes out and I don't separate it in like separate bank accounts that way. I know the common answer used to be 20 buy-ins for the game you're gonna play plus six months living expenses. So the cheapest it could be, 20 buy-ins, you know, at $300 to buy in for one, two, or one, three, would be six grand. And I doubt people really live cheaper than me. So for me, six months living expenses is like nine grand. Six grand plus nine grand, 15. Here's the thing. To be able to put $15,000 aside, and that's minimum, because that's the smallest stakes and that's living as cheap as I do. To be able to put $15,000 aside, you need to be so unbelievably rich, it doesn't matter. Like if you had $15,500, you can't just leave 500 in you know, your checking account for your life expenses and put 15 grand in a different bank account only for poker. Like the amount of money you would need to put $15,000 aside in an account that's poker only without thinking about it, you would need to have so much money that doing this would be nonsense. Like it would accomplish absolutely nothing. You would just have so much cash on hand in your life. So, I mean, the question is usually for people who don't have a lot of money. And if that's the case, I would say just play. Um, if you lose, that's unfortunate. If you win, then you're gonna win. Um, I guess if you really had like really, really small amounts of cash on hand, I would just play. And you know, if you lose, wait till you earn, you know, two or three buy-ins back and then go to the casino and play again and wait till you win and you know, the winning can sustain you. But to put like, it's, it's similar with the idea of an emergency fund that I hear on these finance channels. Like, oh, you don't know if you're gonna be in a car accident or if you're gonna lose your job or if there's gonna be another pandemic. Put all this money aside. If you're rich and you have tons of money to just put aside and not use and not even think about, then losing your job for a year isn't a big deal. Then like breaking your arm unexpectedly isn't a big deal. If you have no money, then you can't just magically wave a wand and come up with all this money to put aside. There's like no middle ground where it makes sense to do this. So the poker bankroll conversation, 20 buy-ins plus six months living expenses. I don't know who came up with it. Congratulations, because everyone says that. But I don't know, it makes no sense to me. Um, there's a guy I know out here who says like 300. He says like, if I lost all my money, just give me a buy-in, I'll play, I'll win, 
I mean, even if I lose, I'm gonna lose small. I'm gonna lose like 50 bucks. I'll go back tomorrow and then I'll win. And like, that's it. I'll just keep winning. So uh, the smallest I hear is, is 300 from that guy. I think it's a really stupid discussion. Um, just go out and play. I've never separated it. Um, back in 2015 and 2016 when I lived here for two years, most of the time I brought $700 with me. If I made money that day, I would leave the profits, I would leave that cash at home, and the next day just come back out with $700. Uh, I remember one time, like actually having no money in my pocket, I was playing at Aria and I was losing and adding on and kept doing that and eventually I had no cash in my pocket but 300 on the table and then I got all in from way ahead by the way and lost to a six outer and that was it I had to go home I mean I didn't feel like playing much after it wasn't just that day things like that were happening for weeks on end I didn't feel like playing much more that day anyway but I couldn't I had no more cash I would have to go to the ATM or the bank or go home I mean that happened once I mean, there were two stretches when I used to live here for those two years where I played like 95 days straight. I mean, I played almost every day. And that happened one time that I could remember. I had actually no money. Um, so I think a lot of people swing way too hard. They play a style that is um, really volatile, like unnecessarily volatile. And the idea of a poker bankroll, I guess, would be would make a lot more sense for people who play a style that leads to that much volatility in their profits and losses. Um, it just doesn't really happen for me. Part of it is when I moved here and I had that 17 grand, I didn't really have a backup. Like if I didn't make 17 grand that first year and stay afloat and in year two be in the same scenario, I, I had nothing else to do. I mean, I would have went back to my parents' house. I don't know what would have happened after that. That was like a last resort and I really didn't want to do it. So there were a lot of times that year where I like forewent what I thought were profitable, albeit small edges that would come with a lot of volatility because, you know, not going broke was my main priority. My main priority wasn't maximize hours or maximize money. It was minimize uh, like risk of ruin, I guess you would call it, if you're really into stats and analytics. So that's part of the reason why my biggest loss ever is minus 880 in one day, because I have like two years of practice. That's how people look for their cars. They don't write down or remember the level and, and uh, aisle that they used to park. They just don't think of anything, and then on the way back hit the panic button. Um, so I have like two years of practice of, you know, really good um, play that took a lot of very profitable spots and forewent some minimal, some minimally profitable spots. Um, it didn't happen like that. I didn't start out like that. Uh, in Wisconsin, it was actually the opposite. I didn't care in the least about the money. I had just left a job that paid me... I mean, what I thought was very well for uh, about seven months, and money wasn't really an issue to me. Um, there was a hand in Wisconsin where I had one pair, and on the flop in front of me, there were three all-ins. A woman went all-in, a guy went all-in, this other guy for a lot more money went all-in. Me and him were pretty deep effective, and there was action behind me. Great Wisconsin game, typical Wisconsin game. And I was the fourth one on the flop to go all in. I had a pair. I was correct that I was ahead. The woman had middle pair, the second guy had middle pair. The third guy I thought with that overshove had a flush draw. He had a flush draw without overcards, which was great for me. And I had a pair of queens. Um, I had ace queen, I had paired my queen on the flop. And we had like a four way all in for $1,200. I ended up losing. I had still had to dodge a bunch of stuff. You know, trips, two pair, flush outs. I didn't win, but like that was a move in that first year in Vegas. Even if I thought I were ahead, I wouldn't have gotten all in because to risk whatever I had to match with a flush draw guy just would have been so much when I knew I have. Even if I'm ahead, I have to dodge so much, especially with a hand that can't really improve. I just had a pair. I could only improve to like two pair of trips. So in Wisconsin, my first 625 hours, I didn't play like that in the least. Uh, then in Vegas, I had to because I didn't have a lot of money, but I was able to do both. With not much money, play 
and profit and get enough hours in and make a living. I mean, I wasn't putting like savings aside, but I was making enough to pay my taxes and my bills all year. And I mean, you could do it with not much money. So I moved here with 17 grand. And I mean, now I think I'm even better at it. I think I could do it. I mean, if I had absolutely no cash, no money to my name when I woke up tomorrow, I mean, if you gave me a grand, I think I would never go broke. I mean, the amount of times in my life that I've gone on a $1,000 downswing is like two, two or three. So instead of, you know, what should my poker bankroll be, I would just practice your poker more and I would try to think of like, are you, does taking this edge make sense? Sometimes the edges are so small and come with so much volatility, it doesn't make sense. If you're willing to take it, then great. But I would think about, you know, what type of swings you're willing to undergo, not just how much of a chunk of cash should you set aside first.